I am back and I'm going to attempt to finish this video. Um, I had a chance to talk to my daughter, make sure everything was okay to talk about this, and she's actually right over there. Hold on. Uh, Hold. Hold. Oh, that's a cat. Boop. Hi. All right, you got to see a little, little snip of her. And they met the cat earlier. So, uh, she's chilling over there. She knows that I'm talking about this, and uh, we just had a moment to kind of talk about things and feelings about things, and I actually watched back the video that I just recorded, and Lord knows I would like to delete that and uh, do it all again, because I touch my face a million times, and I do this a lot, but, you know, a lot of eh and scratch it. I'll do better. But, uh, I'm not re-recording that. <laughs> I don't, I don't have time. I have a full-time job, a kid, lots of stuff, lots of things. But, um, this part is more serious. And this is going to be talking about why the case with the little girl really hit hard. And why Katie pisses me off so bad. Because up until this point, I had been subscribed to her for just a, a small amount of time. And um, I, I kind of like, I think everybody kind of had the same um, realization that like she had all of these sources and how could she have all these sources? She's on, she's on lives all the time. And I mean, I guess that's not a reason not to have them, but it's just, it was a weird thing for her to have all these people bring in information to her. So I kind of thought it was suspicious. I think I actually unsubscribed at some point there when I realized that and was just like, oh, uh, yeah, with the Micah, Micah Stauffer's neighbor thing, that was really weird. So, like, that's kind of what turned me off of her. But when I found out how she was covering this case, the case itself is so upsetting. And then having a personal situation that relates to that makes it even harder. And then sitting there and hearing the words coming out of Katie's mouth. And like I said before, the way she said it, the way she looks when she says it, was... There are no words. It's... Well, actually, there are words. It it pisses me off. It's infuriating. It... There, I don't, mm. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a little bit of time. I know that the other video was like 20 minutes long, so I'll try to make this a little bit quicker, but, um, our story, mine and my daughter's is, um, it's quite fucked up. Like we, we've been through a lot. Um, and I'll probably like, I don't know, as, as things relate to our situation, I'll probably explain more, but just to, to have a brief understanding, my husband, who I was with for 10 years, and her father, uh, struggled with substance abuse issues, so we, we dealt with that, um, then we, then I found out about what she had been going through, which I'm about to go into, and then Right after that, we moved away, or we moved out of that situation, and my husband slash her dad passed away, and that's been over a year ago now, so there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot we've been through, there's a lot of very sensitive subjects that we have personal experience with, but this one in particular was horrible, it's, it's the worst thing that you can imagine, and as a parent, it is your worst nightmare. Uh, there's no way around that. It just is. It's the worst feeling. You feel hopeless. You feel helpless. You feel that you've let your child down. You feel guilt. You feel so much pain that it is almost unbearable, and um, the reason I wanted to share this part is a lot of people 
when the video of this child came out, a lot of people were like, why would the dad do this? Why would he release her information in this, you know, such a sensitive topic? Why would he put this out there? And, you know, for the rest of her life, people are going to see this and so on and so forth. Let me tell you something. My child is not afraid to share her story. Does that mean that she'll talk about everything? No. And does that mean that every kid is going to be that way? Fuck no. It's not easy. There are adults to this day that don't talk about what has happened to them. But it is better to get it out there, to talk about it, to say that enough is enough, than to continue to allow abuse, abuse to happen. And in a parent's shoes, if my situation would have been like his, where there was, I felt that there was nothing I could do to stop it, I would have done the same thing. And I don't think there's a damn thing wrong with what he did, period. And I think people just need to take it for what it is. It's not your choice. He is her parent. That was his decision. And as far as I'm concerned, he saved her. Period. I get huh. So all of this is uh, very emotional. But I, I just wanted to say that. I've, I've seen so many things. And, and yes, I have a heart. I worry about how this will affect her as an adult or as she's growing up having this information out there and people that know her but he he made a decision to do what he had to do in that moment and I can't imagine because in my situation I was able to to get her away from there so what happened I have um on my because I'm um sorry I have brother-in-law who had two kids that were actually his. He had five kids all together, but two that were actually his. And they actually grew up in the home in which I was living in, which was a home where, at the time, my mother and father-in-law, me and my husband and my daughter lived, and then we had my niece and nephew. I had those kids for the whole ten years I was there. And I love them just as much as I love my own. And um, what happened was my brother-in-law was dating this crazy, crazy bitch at the time. And she goes off and she calls social services and she makes hella claims that so much is going on. The kids aren't bathing, they're not eating right, and that there's SA happening um, between the other children, but obviously I didn't believe any of that because I'm like, this bitch is crazy, and obviously the kids are fed, they go to school, they're loved, they're cared for, um, so I didn't believe there was anything wrong or any of that was true, and like I said, it was made about him and his younger siblings that didn't even live in the house with us. So, and I believe as far as she knew that none of it was true. However, I knew social workers would be coming to my home because that's where they actually lived. And I knew that my daughter was in the household. So I sat down to have the talk with my child and explain that if this woman comes in and is asking you all these questions that you're not going to understand, that here's what is going on. Here's why, what that is, you know. Because I, I didn't want to leave her in the dark. And I, I didn't know what kind of questions they'd ask. And that was the night that she told me. And it was very limited at that moment. But that that had happened um, with him to her. Um, like I said, there's no... Nothing can prepare you for it. It is your worst nightmare. It is horrible. And it's even... Made worse when it's someone that you trust and love the way that I cared for this other child. It was betrayal. It was, what the fuck did I do wrong? How did I not know? It was horrible. Um, and I'll probably never 
I know I'll never be the same, and she'll obviously never be the same. He took so much from her. But I will say my daughter is hella strong, and she did the right thing. Um, we moved. We, we got out of that house, and we reported it to social services, which, in fact, by reporting it, I actually reported myself for neglect somehow. I don't know. They did an investigation. Everything was fine. There's that. But she's standing up because she was not the only person he had done that to. He had other siblings, and they're they're being told to be quiet, you know, don't tell on your brother type thing. So my daughter is being very strong, very brave, and doing what it takes to get justice in her case. And I'm dealing with that with her. And there are days where it's not easy, and there are days where we're just proud that we made it. But seeing this case was really difficult, and the way that Katie portrayed the dad and the, the girl and calling her a liar, calling her a brat, everything she did was the worst that you could do in response to something as serious as that. And I'm grateful to see that so many people did stop and say this is fucked up and it shouldn't happen, and I'm glad to see that together as people we can decide that put our differences aside and say this is fucked it's not okay as for katie i don't know what the fuck is wrong with her i really don't um they're just i don't understand how as a mother you could look at another child being hurt in any way shape or form and not feel for that child. So, like I said when I first mentioned making this video, if people take away nothing else, and you can do every bit of research, you can watch all the videos on YouTube and really get a full understanding and hear it from her mouth, but when all this is over and things quiet down and Katie stops doing all the, the dumb shit that she does, I hope people remember that she made the choice to cover the situation in that way. As a human, as a grown-up, as a parent, she chose to call a girl who was a victim a liar and only to backpedal and say, oh no, she's a victim, when she got hate. But from the very beginning, she called her a liar. She said this whole thing wasn't true. It doesn't matter what her direct words were. And... I hope that people see this video and take that away and don't just get wrapped up in whatever happens with this lawsuit or whatever Katie's done because, I mean, believe me, she's done a lot, but this, this was the thing for me that made me feel like she didn't deserve a platform. I, I don't think she does. So, that is that. Um... I don't know what my next video will be or when it will be. We, like I said, we have a lot going on, but I do enjoy making these. Um, this one was a little bit different, a little more difficult. But I hope that by me putting this out there, it helps people. I don't know. I, I guess, I mean, we can see that Katie is an ass and stupid and a shit person. And I don't take any of that back. I mean it. But maybe it's more for me. I don't know. Um, just to say my piece of it. Because when I made my first video, I was like, you know, I have watched YouTube for years. And I, I invest a lot of time in YouTube. And I wanted to say something about what I was seeing. And this this case in particular was one of the biggest things, so I'm glad I did it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.